Blessed be the name of the Lord, maker and possessor of heaven and earth. I am David Eidbonner, and this is David Eidbonner Ministries. Our live communion and anointing service, where we're going to be breaking bread, we are going to be anointing ourselves, and we are going to hear the word of God, we are going to worship God. I welcome every one of you. You are welcome and thank you for joining and uh, this is a great day. Today we are going to have um, Q&A. We are going to have Q&A, question and answer session. We are going to have a question and answer session. Hello Laura, thank you for joining. So we will have question and answer session after the teaching. I'll give room for you to post your questions and you put them as comments and I will answer. And also, uh, what do I want to say again? I would also want you, if you are watching, pardon me, I'm actually setting up the YouTube live so that we'll be live on both areas, right? both on, social, on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm almost done with the YouTube to come on now. Okay, so now we are live on YouTube. We are live on Facebook. Hallelujah, glory to God. We would have question and answer session, right? I welcome everyone joining on YouTube. I am David Eidbonner, and this is David Eidbonner Ministries uh, Communion and Anointing Service. Today, the topic of the teaching is the rapture. We're going to understand the rapture. And uh, oh dear. we are going to be having a question and answer session immediately after the teaching. You put your questions as comments. And even if you are watching a replay, if you are watching a replay, I would answer your questions when I see them. So even if you are watching the replay, Pardon me. Even if you are watching the replay, put your questions there and I would answer them by the grace of God when I get notification of your comments. You could also send me a message through the page and I will answer by the grace of God. We are going to begin by a brief prayer session as we always do to prepare ourselves for what is coming. I want us to begin to pray. Let us start by giving God thanks. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Blessed are you, O Lord, eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, heaven, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. You are good to us. We see this day not by our goodness, not by our strength, but by your mercy, Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Thank you for you are good and your mercy forever endures. We are grateful. We are grateful, Lord, we thank you. Glory to your name, O Lord our God, maker and possessor of heaven and earth. We give you praise, we give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your kindness towards us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you. You have not and will not abandon us. We thank you in the name of Jesus. I want you to praise God for what he has done. Mention the things he's done for you. The Lord has done things for you. Mention them and Give him thanks for them. Say, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for protection. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for correcting us. When we were going astray, you corrected us. You helped us. It is your mercy, Lord God, that we are not consumed. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that you have exposed the traps of the enemy. You have exposed, Lord God, the, the, the traps the enemy set for us to fall into. 
you kept our feet. We thank you. We thank you for the, those who are working essential duty, those who are doing, who are still able to move around to work. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for those who are not uh, permitted to move out, who are at home. It's a time of refreshing. It's a time of preparation. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are grateful for those who are speaking, who are speaking out concerning the, the, the ills in society, who are speaking against sin, speaking against the wickedness in society. Lord, thank you for your protection upon their lives. Thank you for protection upon the activists, the watchmen. We thank you in the name of Jesus. I want you to thank the Lord for your family. Mention those things that the Lord has done for you. All right, those things you know, look around you. You could be worse than this. Thank him that you are not worse than how you are. And thank him that you are getting better. You are moving forward. Things are going better with you. Give him praise. Lord, we thank you. You are good and your mercy forever endures. We are grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Thank you for wisdom. We thank you for revelation, for understanding. Thank you, Lord, for increasing my understanding of your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for correcting me when I go wrong. Thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, for the food, for the provision, for the opportunity to serve you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And now I want you, you are going to forgive everyone that has offended you. Not always easy, I know. Forgive, let go, and let God. Let God fight for you. Let God intervene in your situation. Alright? Let God intervene in your situation. Let Him arise and defend you. I want you right now to let go of every offense. Those who have offended you, those who have hurt you, just say, Lord, I let go, I forgive. Mention them by name. If you, can, if you know their name, just mention them by name and say, I, I release these people. I forgive. Let go of every offense so that God will forgive you. Let go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let go of every offense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, Laura. Thank you. For this comment. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I want you to ask the Lord to heal you of every of every hurt. Because when people offend you, it leaves a scar sometimes, it leaves a pain. Ask God right now to heal you. He should heal you of all those wounds. He should heal you. Say, Lord, heal me of every wound. Heal me in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. Heal me of every wound. I let go of every offense. They that have hurt me, I let go. I let go. In the name of Jesus, I let go of every offense right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I let go. Father, heal my heart, heal my body, heal my soul. Heal me, Lord. Heal me. Heal my spirit. Let no offense remain in my heart. Take away bitterness. Take away pain. I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now I want you to confess your sins unto the Lord. Confess your sins unto the Lord. Whatsoever you have done, whatsoever you have thought, whatsoever you have spoken that is offensive, Ask the Lord right now to have mercy on you. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal me. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus, forgive me. I want you to pray that prayer. Ask God to forgive you. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, forgive me. Ask God to forgive you of the adultery. 
of the uh, lust, of the fornication, of the bitterness, of the anger, whatsoever. Ask him to forgive you right now. He wants to forgive you. He doesn't want to humiliate you. Confessing your sins unto him is a way of securing forgiveness for whatsoever wrong you have done. It's a way of securing forgiveness. So ask the Lord to have mercy on you and to forgive you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. He is here. He is here to take away the pain. He is here to take away the hurt. Let God forgive you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now I want you to ask the Lord... To remove every hindrance, every hindrance to your prayers going up and to the answers coming down. Say, Lord, remove. Just pray as I am praying. Lord, remove every hindrance to my prayers going up to you and to your answers coming back to me, coming down to me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you clear the heavens. Clear the heavens, Lord, that our prayers will rise to you and the answers will come down to us. Remove every distraction, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just thank you for this service. We ask for your presence, Lord. We want you, Lord God. We are gathered in your name. Unto you is this gathering. Please be in our midst. May your presence be with us wherever we are. We ask, Lord God, that you touch us. Touch us. Give us understanding of your word. Let your word burn in us. Consume us, Lord God, with your word. With the fire of your Holy Spirit, let it be upon us. Lord, let zeal for your house consume us. We thank you for answering our prayers. And in the name of Jesus, we bind and forbid from functioning every evil spirit and force that will try to hinder this service. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I welcome every one of you joining. I am David Ibona, and this is David Ibona Ministries. I welcome you. Uh, I see, yes. I see Kita. Kita, you're joining. Thank you for joining. I see others joining. Thank you. On YouTube, those of you watching, God bless you. Please share. Share it to uh, the various groups you are in. Share it on your profile. Uh, let's get more people blessed. Today, we are going to be looking at the topic, the rapture. Understanding the rapture. What is the rapture? Is there a rapture? And at the end of the teaching, you, I would answer questions. So get your questions ready. It must not be concerning this topic of rapture. It could be concerning other topics. All right? Different topics questions concerning the Bible it must not be concerning the rapture. Good morning, Jacqueline. Other topics, just get them ready. You will post them as comments on YouTube. The live chat is on. You post it on Facebook. If you are watching through a, uh, a shared video or a watch party, you click into the page, David Ibona Ministries. Click into the page. So that as you ask your questions, I get to see them. So you click into the, you click on the video, so you get into my page and ask the questions. So my wife Rosemary is coming to lead us in worship. Okay, one well, this. She's going to lead us in worship, and then I will be back for the teaching. Stay put. Please share this video. Grace and peace to you. Miracle worker, you are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Come and change our destiny. A 
destiny today. Come and change your destiny, your destiny today. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle walking God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Powerful healer. You are the powerful healer. Come and heal so powerful. So powerful today. Come and heal so powerful. So powerful today, powerful healer, you are the powerful healer, come and heal so powerful, so powerful today, come and heal so powerful, so powerful today, your name is Yahweh, your name is Yahweh, you are the miracle. God, your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Hallelujah. And I'm back. <laughs> that was brief but good worship. Hallelujah. Pardon my arranging the mic. Okay, so I'm ready. Hallelujah. It's glad to be with the family of God. Yes. I'm glad to be with every one of you. You are indeed my family. So today we are going to be looking at the topic, the rapture. Let's understand what the rapture is. Is there a rapture? The rapture. The Bible does not use the word, the rapture. Hello, Jane. Thank you for joining, Jane. The Bible does not use the word, the rapture. But the, rap, the word rapture is used to describe and uh, an event that is going to take place where the saints of God will be cut up to meet Christ. The Bible describes it uh, in the book of First Thessalonians. Let's look at First Thessalonians, right? And then we will go on to the teachings of the rapture, how what we were taught and how it actually is. First Thessalonians chapter four, let me put it as a comment. First Thessalonians. Thessalonians is in the New Testament. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14 to 17. We are going to see a description. This is what the word rapture is used to describe. Right? Anyone ready to read? Okay. My son David. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and the trumpet of and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we shall 
then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. So now, there is a teaching which we grow up, we grew up with. This teaching says that there will be a seven year tribulation that uh, the rapture will take place and then the antichrist will start a seven year rule at the end of the seven years jesus is going to return that teaching also says that um what will begin the seven years tribulation will be a peace agreement between israel and the Palestinians. Some other people say that it's going to be a peace treaty between Israel and the Arabs. And then there will be a seven year tribulation. If you don't accept the map, you get into trouble. And then Jesus comes again. That is what we were taught. We were taught, rather, sorry. Just thought. We were taught growing up such a doctrine. And we preached it. Of recent times, the Lord opened my eyes to see some things, and I'm going to share them with you. One, the question came where is it in the scripture? I started searching the scripture. Where is it in the scripture that the Bible says that there will be a seven year tribulation? There will be a rapture, and then there will be a seven year tribulation. And then Jesus will return. The Bible clearly states how the saints are going to be caught up to meet Christ. You see, this teaching was started by a man named Schofield. He had a Schofield Bible. You know, these days we have preachers that will have their own Bibles. All right? They will write what their own teachings concerning various um, Bible verses and they sell it out. So you say this person's commentary Bible or that person's Bible. So Schofield had his Bible where he was attaching these doctrines to and it was made popular that you don't need to bother preaching to the Jews, that the Israelites, they don't need to be preached to, they will not listen to you, that during the tribulation the Israelites will now listen to the gospel, and so there is no need to bother preaching to them until the tribulation comes. And so it has been popular. You have a lot of so-called evangelical teachers and preachers who say, hey, leave the Jews alone. Don't preach to them. They will repent during the tribulation. Well, I went into the scriptures, and God opened my eyes, and I saw that that is an unscriptural teaching, very unscriptural. At the end of this teaching, please, I will answer your questions so you can always post your comments towards the end. Right? You post your comments and I'll be answering them. Your questions as comments, I'll be answering them. There is nowhere in scripture that says that there will be a seven year tribulation. Rather, Jesus said, in this world, we will have tribulation. Meaning that the tribulation has been on for a long time. The Bible describes the last years before Christ's return as being the time of the great tribulation. Great tribulation. It means that the tribulation will reach its peak shortly before the return of Christ. The tribulation will reach its peak shortly before the return of Christ Jesus. And now you should see something. Jesus himself describes the rapture. He does. But he doesn't say that there will be a rapture and then there will be a tribulation and then he will come back. He describes the rapture as happening when he returns at his second coming. You see, tribulation as we know it, is the time of great persecution of the church where a lot of people will be persecuted. We know that as a time of the great tribulation. 
there will be a lot of persecution in the church. But during, if you study church history, there was it in the early church. There was a lot of persecution. People were being killed for their faith in Christ Jesus. They were asked, "Are you a Christian?" They say yes, and then they are slaughtered. It was happening. That was tribulation. In the Middle Ages, the Roman Catholic popes were executing, torturing, and executing people that had, had, did not change their faith, that said they were believers, people that professed faith in Christ and refused to go through the Roman Catholic system. They were being slaughtered. Just like what the Bible says, the time is coming when during uh, the, the Great Tribulation, the peak of it, there will be slaughtering over the mark of the beast. People were being impaled, their heads cut off, put on a pipe. People were being sawed into two during what we call the Dark Ages, uh, 900 AD down to 600 AD. For centuries, people were asked to burn the Bibles. If they refused, they were burned. Bibles were being burned by the Roman Catholic popes. People were killed. For reading the Bible. The Bible was outlawed. Are you saying that that was not tribulation? That was tribulation. Jesus uses the word great tribulation. Great tribulation. It means the tribulation has gone on. When Christ was on earth physically, he said, in me you will have peace. In this world you will have tribulation. So the tribulation has been going on. We are in the tribulation. We have not gotten to its peak. So now, let's see. According to 1 Thessalonians, the Bible says, take note of this, from verse uh, 16, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Take note, he descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise up first and then those that are alive will be caught up to where? The clouds, to meet him. Now, this is how the saints will be caught up. Take note of something again that is interesting to note. Here, Jesus is in the clouds. The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14, that when Jesus comes again, he is coming with his saints. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible is describing how the saints of God will meet Christ in the air, in the clouds. In Zechariah chapter 14, the Bible describes Messiah as coming with his saints and his feet will land on Mount Olives. So Messiah is going to land physically on the mountain of Olives on the east side of Jerusalem with his saints. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, this describes how the saints will meet Jesus in the air when he's coming down. And then Zechariah chapter 14, Zechariah in the Old Testament chapter 14 describes Jesus as coming with the saints to the earth, his feet landing on Mount Olives. That is now, the saints who have met him in the air, in the clouds, are landing on Mount Olives. So now I have shown you two descriptions here. How the saints will meet him and how he will come. I want to show it to you from Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah in the Old Testament. I want to show you where the Bible prophesies his coming. Look at Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. Let me put it as a comment on Facebook. And you're going to see that the Bible describes that he comes to this earth physically with the saints. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. Are you there? 
Yes. Benjamin, my other boy. Okay. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall, cl shall clave in the midst in the midst thereof, towards the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mount of the mountain shall remove shall remove towards the north, and half it towards the south. All right. If you go further, because of time, I don't want to read the entire chapter. When you go further in that chapter fourteen, you see it describes that the Lord. Turns, put on the, other one. the Lord turns, he returns with the saints, right? Now his feet has landed on Mount Olives. First Thessalonians chapter 4 describes how the saints get caught up to meet him in the clouds. Take note in First Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible is referring to him, it as the Lord's return, all right? It's not saying his first return is saying at the Lord's return. So <laughs> if you look at verse 14 of First Thessalonians chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15, rather, it says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until what? The coming of the Lord. Do you see that? It doesn't say we who are alive at the time of the rapture. It says, we who are alive until the coming of the Lord is referring to the coming, not an event before the coming. Am I making myself clear? I hope you're getting it. It doesn't say, we who are alive at the time of the rapture, or we who are alive shortly before the tribulation. It says, we who are alive and remain, until the coming. So here, it is being described as the second coming. We who are alive at the second coming will be raptured. When Christ gets to the clouds, he takes us up and then we all come down together. Now, we are going to look at Matthew chapter 24, where Jesus Christ describes it clearly now first Thessalonians chapter 4 and Zechariah chapter 14 come together in Matthew chapter 24 and Jesus makes it so clear Matthew chapter 24 we're going to look at verse 29 to 30 I'm going to put it as a comment here on uh, Facebook Matthew 24 please share this video guys please do share this video a lot of people need to be prepared for what is coming. Matthew 24, verse 29 to 31. You are going to see Christ bring these two scriptures together. All right. Immediately ahead. after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of of the, man, of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they, and they shall gather together his elect for, from the four winds from one end of the earth to, to the other. Do you see that? Here, Jesus is saying there will be a trumpet. We were told the trumpet will sound and the rapture will take place. Jesus is telling us that the rapture is the process of his return. It's the process whereby the saints meet him, meet him at his coming. See it here. That they first of all will appear the sign of the Son of Man. What? Wow. It says my voice on YouTube, my voice being muted. Uh, 
I guess my brethren on YouTube are having issues with the sound. A tear, Deborah. Um, go to Facebook right now. If it is still having issues with sound, please go to Facebook. And David Igbola Ministries is the name of the page. Just the same as this YouTube channel. Go to Facebook, David Igbola Ministries. I'm live on Facebook and on YouTube. She says she's not hearing at all. I want to see. How is it? Deborah, can you hear me right now? Are you able to hear me? Now I've taken off the earpiece. Let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me on Facebook. So please move over to Facebook right now. Now the trumpet will sound. The trumpet will sound. Jesus is saying it here that the trumpet will sound. The trumpet will sound. The sign of the Son of Man will come out, will be released. That sign could be uh, it could be the shout of an archangel. It could be a bright light, just like what we saw in First Thessalonians chapter 4, that there will be a shout of an archangel. It could be the shout of an archangel and a light or something in the sky that will make us know uh, Okay, just a moment guys, let me type something on YouTube. Go to Facebook. If you can't hear me. Those on YouTube are having issues with sound. All right. You go to... Uh, Facebook if you can't hear me. Now, we know that a sign will appear and then there will be a trumpet. So now Christ is making it crystal clear that there will be a trumpet sound and then he will send the angels to gather to him, his people. You know what it is to gather? Let's say you have grains all over your, your palm. To gather them is to pick to pick here and to pick here and to pick there. That is rapture. <laughs> when you are being gathered, you are being taken up. You are being taken up. That is what it is. You, how, how else do you think you are going to fly up to meet him? You are going to be caught up. Who is catching you up? The angels. Jesus says he will send his angels to gather his people. He will gather his people. The angels will go everywhere and they will be picking the believers. Don't forget, brethren, that every believer has an angel. So, so some of you may be wondering how will the angels gather the millions of believers? Every believer has an angel. Jesus said it, that everyone has an angel. You have an angel that is attached to you from birth. That angel at the time of the, of the rapture is going to carry you up. Remember Jesus said concerning Lazarus. He said Lazarus died and was carried by angels to the bosom of Abraham. It is the angels that carry your spirit. Jesus said the rich man who didn't believe in him died and was buried. Lazarus died and was carried by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. That's paradise. And so the angels do the carrying. At the time Jesus comes again, the trumpet will sound. Every angel attached to the believer will lift that believer up to meet Christ. The angels will take us and present us to Messiah. And then when we meet him, he is going to come down because our bodies will be changed. When Jesus is coming again, he's coming to destroy the Antichrist and those that serve the Antichrist. So our bodies are going to be changed. The Bible says that we will our bodies will be changed. The angels are the ones that are going to do the changing. They are going to change this body. 
And when we come, when Christ now from the clouds moves to the ground, all the weapons the Antichrist has will not be able to harm us because we will not have flesh. And that is why the Antichrist army will be decimated. Because everything they throw is incapable of penetrating the new bodies we have. So the rapture is a description of the process, not an event. The rapture is not an event. It is the process of the event. The rapture is the process of the second coming. It is not an event separate. Jesus said at this coming, not at a rapture or at an event before his coming. He said at his coming, there will be a sign, the sign of the Son of Man. First Thessalonians describes that sign as the archangel shouting and some other things happening. And then the trumpet. See it in Matthew 24, First Thessalonians First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says it, there will be a trumpet. A trumpet will sound. And then the angels will bring the dead in Christ to meet him. The, those that are alive will meet him. And then in the sky, it is going to be visible. The rapture is going to be visible. It's not what we saw in that movie, Left Behind. That was a nice movie based on a wrong doctrine, which we all believed back then. We were taught that. It's a nice movie based on a wrong doctrine, Left Behind, where people just disappeared and the world went into chaos. Right now, the world is in chaos. The rapture will be visible, and I'm going to show you how. Remember, the Bible talks about the Antichrist gathering his army at the valley of Armageddon to fight Christ. The Bible says that the Antichrist will gather his army in the valley of, of Megiddo. It's in Israel. He's gathering an army to fight who? Jesus Christ, right? Why will the army be gathered at Meg if they are not seeing the rapture taking place? If they are not seeing that Jesus if they are not seeing the rapture taking place, Christ coming down in his army, you know what it is to mobilize an army to a particular spot? It takes time. It's not instant. It doesn't happen in a second that the armies of this world from Africa, from America, will just land the Middle East and be waiting to fight Christ. It's going to take time. So the rapture is not going to be, it's going to take place in a second, but the enemy will be seen. People will see. Okay, we are back. I lost connection for a moment. People are going to see Christ in the air. Hello, Galena. Galena from Bulgaria, you're welcome, thank you. They are going to see Christ. The Bible says that the kings of the earth will see him and they will mourn. They will be sad. They will say to the rocks, fall on us. They will be looking for where to hide. This thing is going to take some time. People will be watching it happening. The rapture will take place in the twinkling of an eye. People will be translated up. But the event will be seen. People will know that Jesus is there. The, the Antichrist, the armies of this world will see Christ in the clouds. They will see that the end has come. They will see that he has taken his people. And so they will mobilize their weapons and forces together at the valley of Megiddo. They are going to see him. Christ is not in a hurry to come down. He will give the enemy time to gather forces so that they all get bunched together. Christ will be there. The rapture takes place. He receives his people. And then he continues his descent. He's coming from the third heaven. He stays at the clouds. His people come up. New bodies are given to his people. And then he comes down and lands on Mount of Olives. 
from there the battle takes place if so then two appearing um i don't get that japan probably you explain so now he comes we meet him and he lands on the ground with his sins to execute judgment on all on righteousness please you can post your questions now those on youtube seem to have lost connection i'm not something is a matter on youtube i don't know if they can hear me can you if you can hear me on youtube please comment god bless you brethren please share this video now the church has been taught a wrong doctrine that has made christians complacent christians are lazy about waiting to be caught up in the air christians are working for the antichrist thinking that by doing so the rapture will take place and they will not experience the consequences of their actions we have a lot of pastors and ministers that are clamoring for the building of the third temple knowing fully well god destroyed the second temple because now we are his temple if there was need for a temple jesus would not have decreed the destruction of the second temple we are his temple so now you know the bible says that there will be a temple but it doesn't say that we should build it take note the bible says there will be a temple it doesn't say we should build it there's a difference between what is going to happen and what god wants us to participate in its happening or what god wants us to bring about yes there will be a third temple yes we are not to participate in this building we have a lot of believers being dancing around that the third temple is being built some of them are spending money people are actually buying the trump coin thinking that they are doing god a favor that by building the third temple the rapture will take place and then the antichrist will start his rampage on earth no 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 building the third temple is simply preparing the way for the antichrist to come and shock many believers because many believers are not ready many are just there loafing around when they are told to pray they say ah, we nothing to prepare the rapture will take place and we go yes jacqueline i do not know how long it's going to take i do not know how long but i know we will be in the clouds jesus is not in a hurry remember when jesus said i'm coming soon people thought it was next week it has been two thousand years now he is not in a hurry so we don't know how long it will take but we know that it will be long enough for the antichrist to gather his armies at the valley of Armageddon. now a lot of believers have been complacent have been relaxing it could it could take two days it could take a day it could take hours it must not be months remember at the time jesus comes there is a battle over the land of israel so the armies are already closing in on Armageddon. the bible says from in the book of zechariah chapter 14 that there will be a battle going on in the middle east because nations will be trying to divide the land of israel to themselves all right it's not israel and the palestinians now nations will want a part of israel for themselves another nation will say we are taking the golan heights another one will say we are taking the west bank they will be fighting to take over the land of israel and that is the time jesus comes he comes to meet a war over the land of israel probably because there will be a lot of resources and food in the land of israel you know what brings war is actually resources so the resources in the land of israel oil has recently been discovered in the land of israel there's a lot of food in the land of israel fertile ground so there is likely to be because of the hunger in the, in that time there will be battle to control to take portions of that fruitful land 
that is the time Christ comes. So already the armies of this world are in that Middle East area. It's just, you know, it could take hours, it could take days. So now believers have been under that impression that, hey, let's just enjoy ourselves. Rapture will take place. We can build the third temple. The anti- when, before the Antichrist comes, we would have gone. But there is going to be a shock because a lot of people will be taking on our ways. They will be waiting for the rapture and behold, the mark of the beast has arrived. Behold, it has arrived. Already we are hearing of Bill Gates suggesting, in fact, he's bringing up vaccines. You know, the man hates the world population. He says, we are too, human beings are too many. A man that says human beings are too many now comes to say he wants to save every human being with a vaccine. You know what that is? It's like somebody that says he wants to kill you, offering you a glass of wine. Are you going to drink that one? No, seriously. <laughs> Someone says, I want you dead. And then it says, have a glass of wine. It will be suicide to drink that wine. You know that that is your death warrant. Someone who says the world population is too much that we need to cut down the world population is suddenly saying he wants to save the world with vaccines. That's terrible. Well, your question, Jacqueline, the Antichrist appearing mid-trip. The Bible says that he will confirm a treaty with many, a covenant with many. People have confused that covenant as the peace deal between Israel and the Palestinians or between Israel and the Arabs. I want to let you know something. The Trump deal is actually not a peace deal. It's a surrender proposal. They've told the Palestinians to surrender. Russia is not talking for them. Saudi Arabia that they hoped for is not talking for them. Uh, other Arab countries are quiet. You know why? Because the Arab countries have been at peace with Israel for a while. Officially, they may make some statements, but they have been at peace with Israel. They are doing business with Israel. Saudi Arabia are using Israeli equipment. Netanyahu has done a good job with diplomacy. That is why with the, the Trump ambush plan against the Palestinians, the Arabs are quiet. So it is not a deal between Israel and the Arabs. They have been buddies for a while. That's why nobody is invading Israel. 30 years ago, if Israel had moved the, to the Golan Heights, they would have war. Now, Israel has occupied the Golan Heights. And yeah, I'm coming to your question. They've occupied the Golan Heights, no Arab war. That treaty is going to be, the Bible says he will confirm a treaty with many. There's going to be a worldwide treaty signed by many nations. It could be as a result of a war or tensions. There will be an agreement with the nations. In the middle of that treaty, the Bible says in the midst of that seven years, he is going to break it. So the Antichrist will be there before the seven years begin because the Bible says he confirms a covenant for seven years. That is, he agrees to an arrangement probably done before his time. There will be an arrangement he will confirm. That is to, you know what it is to confirm something? It may not have originated from you, but you have agreed to it. So he is already at work even before the seven last years. That is why he confirms it, but he breaks it in the middle of it. So he is already on ground. I hope that answers your question, Jacqueline. He is already on ground even before the seven years. He only confirms it. He just says, okay, fine, let's go back to this arrangement we had before. And then it is signed. It could be an arrangement at the time of the Third World War that is not being followed, that he will come in and unite the nations and say, okay, let's follow this treaty we signed. So now, believers need to rise up and start preparing. The Corona holiday has given us opportunity to see the importance of having some food stored in the house. Those that were mocking the preppers are now prepping themselves. Those that were preparing themselves for the inevitable storing food in buckets and other things 
are more relaxed than those that were mocking them who are now trying to prep with TP, toilet paper, and some, some stuff. <laughs> so, now, people should prepare. This Corona holiday is an opportunity to see how prepared we are for what's coming because it is coming. We are in the tribulation. It has begun. We are not in the last seven years, but we are already there. And so, any other questions? Please pop your questions up. I want to read questions. If you have any question, it could be concerning this, it could be concerning other things. I want to answer them right now before we go to the communion. So that we are grounded in this truth. We are ready. We are ready for the coming of Christ Jesus. Let's not be deceived. Let's not be deceived by all this, oh, nothing can go bad. Nothing can go bad until the rapture takes place. Man, a lot of people will be shocked. A lot are going to have it really bad because they are waiting. They are waiting to be whisked away. Hello, Lang. Terry Lou, you're welcome. <laughs> the best way to describe it is a corona holiday because <laughs> let's be positive about it, right? Let's be positive. It's annoying, it's funny, but you know, it's, it's exposing a lot of things. It's exposing people's weaknesses. It's exposing people's attitudes. It's exposing a whole lot. So now, if you have questions, please put them out as uh, comments. I'll be glad to answer. And share this video, please. Thank you all for sharing. Those of you who are sharing, please do share. I don't know if those people are still seeing me on YouTube. It seems to have, we seem to have lost connection, but I'll just end the video on YouTube now. The connection there seems to be lost. So now I'm answering um, questions. That's true, Terry. That's the rapture. The rapture is describing what takes place at the second coming. Nowhere in the Bible does it. I have not seen anywhere in the Bible that says that there will be a rapture and seven years later, Jesus is coming. The great tribulation is the peak. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. And then Jesus said in Matthew 24 that at the time of his coming, there will be a great tribulation that has not been seen before. What it means is the tribulation is going to go on and then it will reach its peak. It will reach its peak. It will be at the worst level when he returns. Okay? So, questions for, while you are typing your questions, I'm going to pray for those who have not given their hearts to Jesus Christ. It's an opportunity. If you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray with you now so that you are in the family of God. God uh, is in charge of your life. Okay. Now, Jacqueline said the church is not mentioned after Revelation 4. Jesus in Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 4 wrote uh, through John letters to the seven churches warning them to be ready the church is not mentioned with the word church but rather the word saints the word saints is used right saints refers to the church okay so it is the, another name for the church is the saints That, yeah, many people do believe in that. We believe. I preached it because that was what my pastors told me, and I was very happy that I'm not going to see any um, forced vaccination and uh, forced ID 2020. I was so glad I only see those stuff. But right now, I th I I know better. You know, I really know better because hearing that in Denmark. It has been passed into the first vaccination in Denmark. It's coming. 
in China, Christians are being arrested for being Christian, being executed, being taken to labor camps, tortured. In Russia, the law has been passed not to evangelize, that you could be reported by your own neighbor for evangelizing. Making sense now? Those in the West have lived in comfort for so long that they actually believe that doctrine. It is flowing now to the West. In Nigeria, Boko Haram go to villages, round up people and say, if you are a Christian, come to this side and we'll shoot you dead. Those who move to that end and say they are Christians, they ask them, renounce your faith or you get a bullet. Boko Haram are doing it in Nigeria. And boom, boom, boom. People die. Okay, Jacqueline is asking, the sins of the Great Tribulation are not the same sins of today. It's a different time period. I will ask you to give me a scripture to buttress that point. That there are different sins. You will give me a scripture to buttress it. Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul does not write, and the church will meet, will be caught up in the air. He says, we who are alive, referring to the saints, and they that slept in Christ Jesus will be caught up. So he doesn't refer to the church. He doesn't use the word, the church shall be caught up. He says, we who are alive in Christ, the saints. So here again, he's described as the saints. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He doesn't say the churches shall be cut up. He says, we who believe in Christ shall be cut up. So if you have a scripture to buttress that point, I would like to see it so that I will believe it. Because the Bible does not say the first saints or the second saints. The Bible says the saints. Okay, so I want to pray for those who are giving their hearts to Jesus Christ right now. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Just repeat the words I'm using or use your own words. I want everyone born again. Lord God Almighty, I come to you today. I thank you for Jesus Christ. I confess I am a sinner. I give you my spirit, my soul, and my body. I ask that you cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in your book of life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You pray that prayer. You are born again. You have been born anew. You are a new person. The old things have passed away. All things have become new in your life. So rejoice, you are a believer. Now we're going to take the communion. I'm still answering questions, so you can still post your questions. And uh, I'll answer them. Um, you take your unleavened bread. We are taking the communion, but you can still be typing your questions. They are. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Jesus said, as often as we do it, we are to do it in remembrance of him. Laura, I'm going to answer your questions and other questions just after the communion. Father, we thank you for every bread lifted unto you, every unliving bread and wafers lifted unto you. 
we ask, Lord, that you turn this bread in us, this bread we hold into the body of Jesus Christ in us. That as we eat it, we eat the body of Jesus Christ. That every emptiness in our lives, every void in our lives, will be filled with Jesus. Our health, our finances, our career will be taken over by Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you take it, you break it. And then we take our cups. It could be fruit juice, it could be water, it could be um, a non alcoholic wine. You take it, we're going to pray on it and take the communion. We'll put something in your cups. You lift it up unto the Lord. Jesus said, that we should take and drink his blood which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we thank you for every cup lifted unto you. We thank you for the contents of the cup. We ask that you turn this non-alcoholic wine, this fruit juice, this water into the blood of Jesus in us. That the life of Christ will reign in us. That your word says that the life of all flesh is in the blood. Let the life of Christ reign in us. That we will walk like Christ walked. We will live like he lived. He did not sin when he was on earth. He is not sinning. Lord, we ask that that sinless nature will take over our sinful nature. That life in Christ Jesus will take over our physical bodies. That you will make us resistant to temptation. You will make us live a holy life. And we invoke the blessings of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. We invoke it into our lives in the name of Jesus. Protection upon our families. Deliverance upon, to our families. Um, salvation to our families. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to pray with your oil and then I'm going to start answering these questions. I can see questions coming, which is nice. So you take your oil. I'm coming back to the questions. Just let's finish the communion. Keep posting your comments, your questions as comments. Take your oil. There is a place for the anointing oil. The Bible says if, the sick, if there is any sick, you should be anointed with oil. And will, he will recover. He or she will recover. The Bible says, do not touch my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. So you see that the anointing oil still has the re relevance today. Alright? The Bible says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted unto you. Thank you for the oil. We ask that you turn this ordinary oil into holy anointing oil. We ask that you fill this oil with your power and, your, and with your fire. That as we anoint ourselves, we are exempt from harm. Everyone sick will recover. Everyone anointed with this oil who is sick will recover. Amen. Amen. So you take the oil in your hands, place on your head. You say, I receive it in Jesus' name. You can just take it. Okay, thank God we're back. The screen went blank for a moment there. All right. So I'm going to start answering your questions now. I'll continue answering your questions. Okay, Jacqueline, you said there are several raptures. Well, um, we are all learning. I would like you to also give me scriptures 
to show these other raptures so that we will study them together. You can give us scriptures about the other raptures, but I don't see um, the catching it up of the saints is described in First Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, I am yet to see any other instance where all the saints are caught up. All right? I'm yet to see that where all the saints are caught up in another instance. There is only one instance that I have seen. That is why I want scripture so that probably I missed something. As I said, even Paul wrote, I count not myself to have attained. This one thing I do, not looking behind, I press on to. So even Apostle Paul, who wrote to third of the New Testament, said he had not yet gotten all knowledge. He didn't know everything. So if you have scriptures, say, just put them up as comments to buttress that point. But I have not seen any instance, any other instance, where all the saints are caught up to meet Jesus Christ. And Jesus referred to his return in the singular he didn't say when I return on different occasions. He, he refers it as a singular event. So I haven't seen scriptures to suggest that there are other catching away of the saints. What I know is he comes, we meet him, and then we come down to earth with him. And then Laura, um, you said, will a spiritual war take place before we enter the seven heavens? Yes. The Bible says that, you know, Satan and the fallen angels, they are not in hell. Satan is not some ugly looking pitchfork carrying monster. No. He is actually, Lucifer is one of the most beautiful angels God created. He's a good looking evil being. Yeah. So, we he is operating from the second heaven. That is where we have the prince of Persia, the one that was in the book of Daniel, resisting Gabriel, so that Gabriel does not get the answers to Daniel's prayer to him. So in that second heaven, the Bible mentions that in the book of Revelations that Lucifer, Satan, and his angels are going to have a battle with angel Michael. The Bible says Michael and his angels will engage Satan and his angels. He doesn't say Satan and his demons. It's Satan and his angels. So it's going to be a battle in the second heaven. And the Bible says that there was no place found for them anymore in heaven. So um, there is going to be a spiritual war, but it will not involve us. It's going to be the angels of God in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. You see it there. It says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Verse 8. But they did not prevail, nor was any place found for them in heaven any longer. Verse 9. I'm reading from the Revelation chapter 12. Verse 9. So the great dragon was cast out, and the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, because some people were, I used to believe that this scripture was at the beginning, when Lucifer rebelled, he was thrown down. But verse 10 shows that it is not at that beginning when Lucifer was cast out of the third heaven, but rather it is going to happen in the future, because it says in verse 10, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. As at the time Lucifer was in the third heaven, there was no Christ. All right? It was the word of God, not Christ. So now there is a Christ, it means this is an event that is taking place after Christ has come and died and resurrected. And then it says, for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. You see this now, that Satan has been accusing the believers. Now he is cast down. Satan is called, Satan means resister. 
He is the prosecuting attorney. Jesus is the defense attorney for us. So until there are no more saints being taken, being there to be accused, the, the accuser who has the right to remain. I don't know if I'm getting it now. Satan is there accusing us. Jesus is there defending us, right? At some point, there will be no more need for the accuser to accuse us before God. Why? Because we have been taken up. I don't know if you are getting it. The saints have been taken up to meet Christ. So nobody is like you have already been judged. You've been your case is already settled. You have been taken up to Christ. So Satan cannot accuse you because you can't sin anymore. What Satan is doing is to accuse us before God. If you lie, the devil goes before God and says, so, so, and so lied. So I have a right to inflict pain. This person committed this sin. So I have a right to attack. But the only time the devil is thrown out is when the saints can no more sin. And the only time the saints can no more sin is when they are taken up. So at that time, remember the Bible says in the book of Revelations that unclean spirits came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet to gather the armies of the earth against Christ. So now the dragon has been cast out of the second heaven to the earth. He has a short time to gather forces against Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you where it talks about these three on Prince Spirit. So now, looking at this Revelation 12, you see that the saints were the ones being accused. Now the enemy has thrown. So at that point, Michael is going to dislodge the evil forces in the second heaven and cast them down. Yes, you read this scripture, Jacqueline, because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test them who dwell on the earth. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10. Now, Jesus was referring to the church at Ephesus. There were seven churches. He made this statement to the church at Ephesus because they were faithful. He didn't make this statement to the other six churches. So this statement was specific to the Ephesian Christians, not to the entire body of Christ. Because in the other churches, he kept telling them, prepare yourself before I come. So now, when he keeps us from the hour of trial, which is coming, I want you to know this. God keeps people from trial in different ways. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the righteous die and people do not know that they are being taken away from the evil to come. In the book of Isaiah, the Bible says the righteous die and people do not take it to heart that they are being taken away from the evil to come. So the righteous may die so that they don't see an evil coming. Another thing that happens is that God keeps us in the midst of the trial we stand, just like he did to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did God not deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fire? He delivered them from the fire. But were they in the fire? They were in the fire. The Bible says, you will go through the fire, you will not be burned. You go through the water, you will not drown. So God keeping people from the hour of trial does not mean the way we understand it that that means they will be not they will be they will be absent at that time it means that there will be a grace to keep them true did god deliver shadrach meshach and abednego from the fire he did but were they in the fire they were did how did god deliver them from the fire he made the fire not to burn them. So these messages, this, the message to the seven churches, if you look at it, 
the seven churches there, they were actually physical church locations. Now, these seven churches refer to the seven characters we have in the church of Christ. We have those that do not have money. They are serving God with everything they have. We have those that are like the efficient church that are very loyal. We have those that are like the Laodicean church that think that they are prospering. They have private jets. They have beautiful houses. And so God approves of them. Whereas God does not approve of them. So the letter to the seven churches is referring to the seven characters the seven major characters we have in the body of Christ. That is, these churches that were written about in Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 4, they were not the only churches there. You know that. There was the church in Jerusalem. There was the church in Samaria. There was the church in Africa. But Jesus singled out seven churches because these seven churches had the seven characters that are seen in Christendom. Those that are faithful and loyal, he will keep them. The warnings are for today. Yes, the warnings he gave the seven churches are all for today. You have believers that are lukewarm. You have believers that are living in prosperity and thinking that they are okay with God, whereas God sees them the other way around. You have believers that have gone through so much pain and they are harboring bitterness. Jesus is saying, look, I know you have gone through persecution, but you have one thing against you. You have left your first love. He said it, I think, to the church at Teatira and some of them, a few others. He said, you have persevered. You have gone through but there is something against you. You have left your first love. That is possibly the church had gone through so much persecution that they were developing bitterness. And Jesus was telling them, take that thing away so that I do not uh, witness against you. All right? So these seven churches are the seven major characters of the church found in the church of Christ, that is, in Christendom. Hallelujah. So, I answered the question of spiritual warfare. There will be a spiritual warfare. The angels will throw Satan down and his angels. And then, there will be a, a spiritual and physical warfare combined when Jesus takes out the Antichrist and chains Satan in the bottomless pit. It's going to be physical and it's going to be spiritual. That is why the Bible says that when he comes, Jesus said in Matthew 24, that when he comes, the sun will go out. The sun will stop shining. The moon will stop shining. So how are you going to see? Remember, spirits don't need sun or moon to see. In Zechariah chapter 13 or 14, one of these two chapters, the Bible says that great day of the Lord shall be like no other, that it will neither be night nor will it be day. That's in Zechariah. That it will neither be night nor day. What does that mean? That means the sun and the moon will be out of the picture. Because the sun rules over the day. The moon rules over the night. So when it is a neither day nor night, it confirms Matthew 24. That Jesus, when Jesus said the sun and the moon will fall down. I hope I hope you got the explanation. Any more questions? Please shoot your questions. I'll be del I am delighted to answer in the next three minutes. If I don't see questions, then I'll close the service. Please share this video. And uh, even if you have questions that are not related to the topic of rapture, you can put them out. I'll be glad to uh, answer them. Really glad to answer them. Right. Um, any more questions? I have to check. I'm not seeing more. I hope I have answered all your questions. Thank you all for joining. I am David Ibona, and this is David Ibona Ministries, our communion and anointing service. Today we had an addition, the questions and answers session. 
Yeah, thank you, Jacqueline. Where we are able to reason together the scriptures. And it is, you know, God called me to take and to teach the gospel to all nations. That is why the mission of my ministry is to take and teach the gospel. It is my delight when you understand the scriptures. Thank, thank you, Lang. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, uh, Kalita. Kalita, thank you. I join every one of you. Laura, thank you all for joining. Even if I do not mention your name, I may not be seeing your comment or I may not be reading it at this time I am live. But thank you for your comments. If you are watching the replay, you can as well post a question as a comment. And when I am notified that there is a new comment, I will read it and reply you as a comment. No, now you have to go back. If you are tuning in late, you have to rewind and start again. The presence of God is with you as you watch and listen to this video. I have received testimonies from various nations of healings and deliverances. Demons have taken off while watching our services. They've taken off. People have sent me testimonies like that. So the presence of God is with you and is here. Thank you all for your support of this ministry. Thank you. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. God bless you.